It is another beautiful day to welcome to this class English language and our focus will be on lessons and structure that is choosing nearest a meaning. This particular class will be very very useful to those of you who want to excel excellently in your UTME, SSCE and IDCSE. There are segments of the examination questions that demand that you look up for what we refer to as nearest in meaning. And that is why we say choosing the nearest or choosing nearest in meaning options in the examination. We have a lot of other elements on lens and structure, but on choosing the rest in meaning, we discover that many of us have found it difficult to choose the correct number, the correct option that favors the correct answer. And do not forget that this is one of the aspects of the objective test that many candidates dread most. It is hated by many who prefer to first go to friendly sessions. They call them friendly. Actually, they are not the friendly. We will talk about that later on. Friendly sessions such as the one that best completes, appropriate operation, and so forth. But nearest meaning actually ought to be the simplest if you know the rudiments that we are to follow. Since I'm speaking, I have some sympathy for candidates who hold the view that nearest meaning is tough. I sympathize with you. Nearest meaning is not tough. It is the simplest form or the simplest of all the aspects of lens and structure if you know the rudiments. That is why I will be giving us some guidelines that will help us to go to where we are going. Uh, we should not forget that nearest meaning is what many a person refers to as synonyms. What do we understand by synonyms? Synonyms have to do with what? Word that are nearest meaning. Let's have a look at the guidelines that I said I shall marshal out. The first one is understanding the target. If you understand, what is the target of the question? The first idea can be inferred from the points that we are about to stress now. What is the point we want to stress? Remember that the target is for you to bring out the nearest in meaning to the underlying word and not the one with the same meaning. Synonym doesn't mean same meaning, but nearest in meaning. So, what do you have to do? When we say choose a word that is nearest in meaning, let us understand the target here now. That if we have the nearest in meaning, the grammar here suggests that there are other options that could be near or nearer in meaning. It is not clear for you, the candidate, to determine the target. Your duty is to look for the nearest, not the near or the nearer. Look at this example. We need a vast area of land to build the structure. Look at the expression here, vast. If I were to ask you to bring out a lot of synonyms for vast, you bring a lot of them. Let's look at some of the synonyms for vast. Huge. We have titanic. We have very big. We have large. If you look at it, will you say that huge is the correct answer? Because it's a synonym to vast. So let's apply it. We need a vast area, rather, we need a huge area of land. Is it possible? Have you seen some uh, an area of land that is huge? Let's watch out. Our target matters a lot. Or should we say Titanic? Does it match? Or do we say very big? Does it match? Certainly not. So the correct answer is a large area of land. And that's why option D is correct answer. Remember, you have to understand the target. Antidote 2 is for you to consider the context. Here, you should note that the options given can be similar orthographically. When I say orthographically, I mean by spelling. They can be similar in spelling, similar in structure, or similar in terms of emotions that they convey. So this similarity will land a candidate into confusion if care is not taken. The first guideline to avoid being confused is that you consider the context. 
If you want to know more about contest news, search for contest news in my channel here. You will see a video that I have made on contest news. There is a class there. So, determine the contest. The option that you are to choose should be the one that fits into the circumstances of use. The meaning will be perfectly relevant to the idea expressed in the given clause. In other words, you must consider the chemistry of the whole sentence along with the special attention paid to the underlying word. Consider this example. In view of the world economic recession, massive retrenchment is going on at the various commercial houses in the country. What are the options available? We have about five options. Option A, withdrawal. Option B, entrenchment. Option C, recruitment. Option D, reorganization. And option E, cutting back. Here the candidate is not careful. He brings into the question the general idea he has about retrenchment. Remember, we say you should consider the context. If you bring the idea of retrenchment, will it be correct? Because here, yeah, retrenchment always has to do what? Sacking or retiring workers. That is the notion of stopping the contract. He may toss, that is the candidate now, he toss rush for withdrawal. This is wrong. Not because withdrawal has no meaning relationship with retrenchment, but because it is all in the context. We can withdraw services, statements, etc., but not workers when they are being sacked. Option D has a similar problem. Option D has a similar problem. When there is a general economic recession, slacking of business and industrial self, uh, activities, the drastic measure is not to reorganize. So reorganization does not fall in place. So what else do we have there? You can see that the answer is already looked at us, cutting back. The organization has to, uh, does not have to be there. The right answer is cutting back. That is sacking, reducing the strength of the workforce to the number the company can propose. Do we get that? So, entrenchment does not have anything to do here. I will talk about entrenchment later because entrenchment and entrenchment may be homonymous. May sound, the sound may look alike or the spelling, spelling may look alike, but we don't use that at all. That is something I want to focus our attention on. We will now focus our attention on the third guideline I promise to give you, that is, consider grammatical rules. What is grammar? Grammar refers to the rules that guide the use of English. In your various dialects, some expressions will be correct, and when translated like that to English language, it might be wrong. Yes, I don't want to go into, I don't want to be there now because uh, of the international class that I am in. In this situation, look at this session. Remember we are saying consider grammatical rules. Look at this question. The courts restrain the company from laying off the workers. Understanding grammatical rules will guide you in making the right choice. At times, certain options will be synonymous with the underlying word, but the given grammatical context will not favor them. If you thus choose such, then grammatically you are wrong. Consider the options to the underlined word. Option A, compared. Option B, ordered. Option C, prevented. Option C, cajoled. And option E, persuaded. The courts restrain the company from laying off the workers. Alright. Do we go for compared? Remember the of grammar. If we choose compared, for example, compared from laying off, the courts restrain the company, the, the courts restrain the company from laying off the workers. Do we say the courts compared the company from? Compared does not have a grammatical relationship with from. They don't work. The preposition does not fall in place there. The presence of from in the sentence demands that the option you have to choose should be the one that can go with the preposition from. So from doesn't go with compare, it is from. Compare goes with what? Excellent. True. Or should we go for other? If we choose for other, other from lay off, other doesn't go with a from. 
or rather it goes uh, against. If you go with cajole, does cajole go with front? No. Cajole goes with straw. Cajole straw. Okay, maybe it's persuaded. Does the word persuaded go with from? Wrong. It doesn't. Persuaded goes with what? Against. Which now leads or which one option that is left? The answer is thus prevented from. Do we get that? Good. So, we choose word prevented from as the correct uh, answer. Option C. Option C here is correct uh, answer. You can see that grammatical consideration or the co considering the grammatical rules will help us to make the right choice. Let's proceed to the first rule. Use elimination technique. When you do not know the meaning of the underlying word at all, you can use the elimination technique. What is elimination technique? This is a kicking out one by one of the options whose senses contradict the idea in the remaining part of the statement. Let us consider this question. You may be ignorant of the word underlined here, exacerbating or exacerbates. Look at the question or the statement. Many critics have accused the present government of exacerbating the suffering of the people instead of alleviating it. Now, look at the word exacerbate. You may not even understand the word alleviate. Yet, the fact that critics are accusing the government readily implies that it has not been able to effectively deal with the suffering of the masses. Instead, it must have been worsening their condition. So, what are the available options we need to consider? Look at option A, eliminating. Option B, we have popularizing. Option C, we have tackling. Option D, we have reducing. And option E, we have increasing. As a result, options such as eliminating is wrong. Options such as tackling, because if you look at it, why do we say options such as eliminating, tackling, and reducing are outrightly expelled? A good government is neither expected to enjoy nor magnify the suffering of the people. But when it does, it won't amount a publicity campaign over such. Therefore, we also remove popularizing from the option. Do we see it? Eliminating. If you look at the question, the statement, many critics have accused the present government of eliminating. Will you accuse somebody for removing problem? No. Will you accuse somebody for tackling problem? No. Will you accuse someone for reducing problem? No. But will you accuse someone from popularizing the suffering of the people? That is why we say that even though they do remove it, they will not popularize it. Which now leaves, which now leaves or which was only one option remaining, increasing. So when you apply elimination technique, you will get to the roots of the correct uh, option. The fifth rule I will give you is homonymous relationship. Beware of homonyms. What are homonyms? We said that homonyms have to do with words sounding alike. And I call these lazy candidate options. And by using lazy candidates, I just I don't want to use the word foolish candidates. But they are actually lazy candidates. So the point here has a little connection with what I have discussed so far. Look at this expression. The evidence of the witness corroborated that of the accused. Look at the word corroborated. If we have not heard of the word corroborated before, look at the options and find out if there is any link we have of the options that has anything to do with the underlying word corroborated. Option A, contradicted. Option B, collaborated. Option C, confirmed. Option D, sentenced. Option E, condemned. Look at these five options given. Paying attention to them, we will see that the examiner has included some options that can readily deceive the lazy candidate. At times, words with similar spellings like collaborated could deceive the candidate to choose word corroborated. 
Please be aware of such words. You are looking for a synonym and not a homonym or homophone. Whether they sound alike or not, stay away from them. So you can see that in this expression, some would think that since corroborated and collaborated sound somewhat alike, they should have greater meaning. No. This is a trap for shallow minded candidates. Such a devil word is hardly the right answer. Corroborated suggests agreed to or confirmed. Why collaborated with means colluded with or worked together. Note that four out of the options begin with CO or CO as a sound, also A, B, C, and E, out of which only confirmed is right. Since only confirmed is right, that is the trick we are talking about in this uh, category that confirmed is the only expression that is synonymous in relationship to the word corroborated. We should not be deceived when we have words that are homonymous in relationship. The sixth, word, uh, the sixth rule, so to say, is uh, antonymous awareness. Beware of antonyms. What are antonyms? Remember that antonyms are words that are opposite or nearly opposite in meaning. To adequately confuse the candidates, especially the ones who do not bother to read the instruction very well, or who is too much in a hurry to write, some antonyms are means with the expected synonyms. Something is bitterly funny here. The, the deadly antonyms are those the candidate is normally familiar with, those that he or she has always associated with normally in life or in their everyday speech will now be here. So in order to stay away from this trap, we say that you have to be vigilant to remember that you are working on synonyms, not antonyms. Look at this example. No matter how hard he tried, his effort proved futile. No matter how hard he tried, his effort proved futile. What are the available options? We have about five options. Option A, offensive. Option B, we have a uh, hostile. Option C, we have successful. Option D, persistent. And option E, useless. The underlined word here, I'm sorry, I couldn't underline in the video, is futile. You can see the word futile as the underlined expression. Successful is a direct antonym to futile. Is that also? So many a candidate may be tempted to choose the word successful, futile, successful. Is that also? Once you are able to bear this in mind, the option is eliminated. I hope that the contest, especially the grammatical undertone, no matter how hard he tries, guides you to choose useless as the correct answer. So stay away from both sides offensive, successful and persistent. They will not help you. Know that you are dealing with synonyms, not antonyms. And the last rule I will give you on how to attempt nearest a meaning objective or multiple choice questions is how you can look out for idioms. Looking out for idioms will help you in this situation. How will it help you? Holding all, holding all of the points I have said above, what are the points I have discussed so far? I have talked about, what, do you remember them? I have talked about two, one, understanding the target, two, understand the context, three, understand the grammatical rules, four, use elimination technique, five, beware of robberies, and I just talked about beware of antonyms. Once you have all this in mind, you should watch out for idioms. You remember what idioms are, is that not so? Good. Unlike the SSC questions, UTME, popularly called jump questions or jump exam, we confuse candidates a lot. Look at this question. It was neither their custom to keep an open house on Sundays. The usher on the line, I also, I also was unable to derive it here, maybe because of uh, being in a hurry, is to keep an open house on Sundays. To keep an open house. Now, look at the available options. Welcome all visitors. We have kept the shutters open, we have left the house open, we have exposed the house. So which of them is the correct answer? When something like this happens, all the hints I have discussed are still useful, one to six. Then, after which, you will now take a powerful clue to get the right synonym for keeping an open house. Is it expose the house? Is it leave the house open? Is it keep the shutters open? Certainly, you know that the answer is what? Welcome all visitors. 
where you are able to give attention to these seven rules I have given you, believe me you, that you will be very happy that you will score all the questions correctly in the session nearest in meaning. If you simultaneously bear in mind the above points, your choice will be the right one. Your duty is to choose a word or expression that is nearest in meaning. The closest in meaning is what you choose, not the nearer, nor the near, nor the antonym or homonym. The option most probably fits into the given context, just as you should not be deceived by literal means. Like I said earlier, read the instruction properly and act accordingly. If you have actually benefited, do not forget to subscribe to our channels. My email will be is always available to all those who wish to see them. Uh, my number is also available. I just kept them here um, for a reason. Don't worry, at this case, I want to tell you thank you very much for being here. Remember, you can subscribe to get an update of any of our class that will suit your name at a point in time. With this, I say thank you very much for listening. It's your boy, J-O-E-N.